G'day, Michael here. This video is about setting up a Mac OS in a virtual machine on a Linux desktop. Uh, I've seen a few videos and a few um, you know, blogs and that sort of thing around showing how to set this up. Now I've uh, pulled this together as a few loose ends that didn't quite make sense to me. So I've made myself a, a few little aids to make it a little bit easier. And I'll upload it to my Google Drive uh, and make it publicly available. So you'll be able to just use this script to save a little bit of legwork. Uh, I found it was a little bit tedious, and now this made it pretty simple. Okay, so here you can see the specs of this machine, and it's important to know what your machine physically can do. Now, it looks like I've got 24 CPU cores there. That's not quite true. That's actually threads, because this machine's got a hyper-threading. It's got two hexa-core CPUs. So across those two CPUs, there are really 12 cores. But with hyper-threading, uh, you, you get kind of 24 cores. It has advantages if you've got uh, waiting, you know, software that creates a lot of waiting time. Uh, it uses the waiting time to push other processes through each core. So, yeah, it, it does help your machine kind of work around the slowness of software. Um, it's a bit of a, I haven't really found many advantages or disadvantages either way. If you've got very efficient um, throughput programs, like you might be using something like FFmpeg or something to, to belt through a video, you probably find that it actually is a few percent faster without hyper-threading. But either way, just leave it like that. It seems to be very tolerant anyway. Um, yeah, but you've got to know your real CPUs, because you don't want to ask for a virtual machine to have more real CPU cores than your machine's got. Otherwise you could cause a bit of a pickle for the, the system. Okay, so let's fire up VirtualBox. Oh, it's only misconfigured there, but that doesn't matter. I just don't need that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is create a new uh, virtual machine. There's a, a few things you've got to do. Now I'm going to just call this one Sierra. Just give it a simple name. And let's look at my name and say, okay, I've got Mac OS Sierra, so it's already saved us a bit of bother. I'm going to give it about 4 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, 4 gigabytes of RAM, anything else? No, that's it. Okay, so... I'm going to give it a 120 gigabytes of load. Oops, I don't want terabytes, I don't have that much on the machine. That'll do. Uh, create. Okay, settings. Uh, system. We've got the, the RAM. I want to give it four CPUs. That's okay. Display. I'll give it all the, the highest setting they can have. Just in case I decide to max, you know, give it you know, a higher resolution. Storage, it's got that virtual machine we've created. Now we're going to have to come back to this and add in a new disk so that we can boot the system. So, yeah. All right. Network, I use Bridged. There are two ways you can use NAT, which is the default. NAT is Network Access Translation. Um, so it kind of goes via your host machine, that's this machine. Um, through a kind of a secondary network. Whereas if you use bridge, like I've got set here, it actually engages in the network as another machine on the same IP range. So it becomes a participant of your local network. The other way it's kind of isolated, a little bit sandboxed. All right, USB, I use USB 3. Gives you better access to, if you want to use SD cards and things and read them. Okay, so that's that. So it's set up, but it's not bootable. We can't run it. Right, so where I've, I've got the information downloaded in my downloads directory, I'm going to repack it into a, um, you know, I don't know, a TGZ file or something, something like that. Okay, so it's downloaded here. Now, uh, in the bundle, you'll see this. This is actually the reference to the original uh, blog, so you can check out what what those guys have done. Uh, they also have done a, uh, an instruction for running it on VMware. So if you want to set up Mac OS on a VMware, it, it'd be similar to this, but here's a specific tutorial. There's just a, um, a web link. Okay, right. Now what I've created is this script. Now, this script saves a lot of typing. If I want to deploy this across a couple of machines, it's going to save me a lot of time. And also I've redone this a few times, so it saved me a lot of typing and redoing it. So yeah, anything can automate is a good thing. All right. So we've got to go the long way around using a terminal to actually engage that guy. So we've got a CD, change directory, 
the DAW for downloads. Press the tab key, it completes that. M, and press the tab key and it filled out the Mac OS, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so list. So you can see here, we've got installation tools as a directory. Mac OS, blah, blah, blah. You can see they correspond to all these, even the readme text. And you've got the VirtualBox set up Linux. All right, now, to get it to employ or execute a executable that's on the, the directory you're at, you go dot slash, so that means it'll use whatever's here. Uh, I just type V and the tab key and it completed the virtual box, blah, blah, blah. So you don't have to do much typing with all this. All right, so I'll do that. We had to do the creation of the virtual machine here just so it sort of fills out the skeleton. Now what this is going to do is uh, copy the virtual um, or is it virtual drive, which is this guy, to the destination folder of our choosing. Oh, now I better just check. It's important we open this in an editor. Uh, display. I've got here got VM as the virtual machine name, which this has to correspond with that so that this script knows what to do and it work, works everything back on string vm so it'll set the right settings the other thing you might want to set here i've set the screen size to 1920 by 1080 i've got a 4k monitor here 1920 by 1080 it's got a manageable size it gives you a reasonable resolution in the, the guest but it's not too big so as to swallow up too much of the, the host screen uh, the other virtual machines such as Windows or Linux. Let's just boot up a Linux. There we go, do that one. So I'll start. I'll let that boot up. Um, is, is actually capable of resizing on the fly, whereas I couldn't find any reference to any drivers for Mac OS that would resize on the fly. So I'll just wait for the, the Linux to boot up. Anytime. I'll just leave it there. You'll see once once we're logged in, I'll be able to. Oh yeah, see, it's, it's resized. Log in. You can resize the screen. Give it a few seconds, and it catches up. There we go. It's resized. All right. Let's just open a browser or something. Yeah, I don't need the welcome screen. It's the browser. But if you want to resize it, you can resize it to any size, give it a few seconds to catch up, and it'll resize according to whatever you've asked for. That feature doesn't seem to be available on the Mac OS, but that doesn't really matter. Just set it here to a scale you'd like, okay? So if you're installing uh, other clients like w Windows or Linux, you seem to be able to resize, but on Mac OS, you have to specify it by this command here, but in this case, just edit in the script here, and then you run the script. So like I said, going back to this, I should just log out of here and do that again. So open a terminal, CD, DOW, then I press the tab key, gives me downloads, MA for Mac OS, blah, blah, blah. Press the tab key, went to that. LS will see the files, and that should correspond with the files that we have on this. Put this here, right there, right. And we want to run this VirtualBox setup Linux. Now, obviously, if you've edited this, you'll have to save it before we execute it. Um, Sierra is what I've called it. I'm going to make sure it's the same name. Sierra, Sierra. And the screen size has to be specified here. Okay, so I'll just close that. And to execute that, we go back in this shell here. Dot slash, press the V key, press the tab key and it types out the rest for us. Press enter. Now the first thing it's gonna do is copy that drive across. Now let's just go to that in a new tab. Um, uh, VirtualBox VMs, Sierra. It's copying this file. Now it's a pretty sizable file. It'll probably take about 20 seconds. It's reading and writing from the same disk, so it's a bit slow. At least I could write, read and write across the interface and be okay but it's within the drive. So we just got to wait and wait and wait until it's done. 
and then it's been done. Good. Let's also run that uh, that text script. Um, where are we now? So let's just bang that over there. Okay, so it's copied the virtual box. Um, well, actually, the disk to that destination, and it's run these set of configuration instructions to VirtualBox. All right, so back on VirtualBox, we have to change one last setting, and that is the storage. Now here you can see the controller for the SATA controller. There's a little, a little plus button here. So add hard disk. We've got to choose an existing disk, and now we should see that guy. So I clicked on that, and that should be it. With a bit of luck, I've got it right. Let's start that and see what happens. And it's already resized to the 1920 by 1080. In a perfect world, that should just boot. Now, there is actually a bit of preparation involved if you wanted to create one of these disks and use a different system. So, this is the easiest way. You can do more with the virtual machines by setting up your own ISO for being like a boot CD for installing the system. Don't worry about all this text that goes by. That's basically a verbose, you know, it's hardware probes, uh, software connections, whatever. Okay, it's coming up. In fact, we've got a grey screen and a mouse pointer in there is a good sign. Okay, so I'm in Australia. Australian keyboard, yeah, that's fine. Wait a sec then. Don't transfer from other computer. We're in a bit of an island here at the moment. Continue, but don't want location services. Don't use, that's fine. I don't want to sign in. You can if you want to, if you've got an Apple ID and you want to use the whole app, Apple ecosystem, that's that's probably half the reason why you bother installing Mac OS. Or if you've got some vital piece of software you must use. Uh, yeah, I'll skip that. Got it. Agree. Confirm that I agree. Okay. Give a login name. Just a tab key to the same. The password doesn't really have to be overly secure in here. In fact, you'd probably go without a password, really. Because of, you already have uh, the whole Linux environment inside a password protected setup. So, yeah. All right, continue. Australia, Sydney is the same time zone, saves me a lot of fussing around. I don't need to send statistics, etc. And I don't want Siri. You do whatever you like, and enable, disable, whatever you want to do. That's all good. That'll percolate. Now, I've done this already once today, just to get myself settled in. Actually, twice. Um, and I've run the update, which is a sizable update. Um, on the system, but funny enough, it failed on the first boot, some little glitch, uh, but all I did was shut it down and restart it and was happy. So I don't know what the story was, but it, it was happy after that. Okay, so I'm just verifying my keyboard. Yeah, that's cool. Right, now because I'm operating on a Linux host, I don't have to set up printers, just to demonstrate that. Linux takes care of the Apple um, printing system. Now I've just fired up Safari. Let's just go to, I don't know, YouTube. Yeah, let's go to YouTube. Just to check that everything's working. That'll be just fine. And as you can see, it's working okay. Let's see if it plays a video. I don't know whether I've got sound enabled. Got to find that out. I haven't really worried about sound. Yeah, sound's working fine. Okay. So we've got sound and all. Now I might go to another website. 
Oh, let's just go, I don't know, Apple. Dot com, that'll be fine. Right, so they want to sell us a phone. So we should be able to go file, print. Copies one, one of three. Okay, so let's just see what the next page looks like. Yada yada. Okay. I've got to select a printer. And it's already got all the printers set up that I've shared with my Linux computer. So there's no configuration of printers or anything. No drives to mess around with. It just works if you've got Linux as your host. If you've got Windows as your host, you'll have to actually set up all the drivers. Um, so there's, there's some sweet advantages to having a Linux system. Alright, so let's just pick on that just to demonstrate we're going to do that. I'm going to just print page 1. Sync will be fine. Print. So quickly it'll print out. It's been sent there, and you can see up here it's been got a notification there. I hear the printer fire up. Okay, so that was our print. So as you can see, that's about as quick and as smooth as you can get with installing a uh, <laughs> well a virtual machine with Mac OS on it. Well, I guess that's it. Um, yeah, feel free to like, share, subscribe, ask a question, leave a comment. Bye for now.